the Silurians Press Club is celebrating its 100th birthday. That's right. Tonight we celebrate every one of you because you represent the best and the brightest of New York area journalism. I'd like to present the first award, the Medallion for Breaking News. It goes to three reporters from the New York Times, Will, William Rashbaum, <laughs> Jonah Bromwich, and Ben Protis. For their, for their richly detailed scoop on a grand jury's indictment of Donald Trump for falsifying records to conceal a payoff to a porn star that might have derailed his election as president in 2016. As our Michael Serrell wrote in our, in our newsletter, their scoop was a model of thoroughness in explaining the rationale behind the indictment and the flaws that made the case less than foolproof. Please come up. <laughs> The Merit Award goes to the staff of Newsday for their coverage of the arrest of an unassuming architect in the murders of several women whose bodies were found in Gilgo Beach, a story that keeps on, keeps on chugging along, unfortunately. Will the representative of Newsday please stand and take a bow? The medallion for TV feature news goes to Walter Kane and Susan Adovino of News 12 New Jersey, who broadcast a disturbing exclusive report on a rape victim whose charges were not pursued by prosecutors and had to make the case for herself by eliciting a confession from her, her assailant by telephone, a really a special, unusual story. Uh, as the judges said, the report exposes the disrespect and incredulity that too often greets victims of sex crimes. One of the interesting things about this story is we started about three years ago. Uh, we wanted to see what had happened with the inventory of untested rape kits that New Jersey had ordered. And the answer, of course, is nothing. It was never done. But the more we looked, the more we found all kinds of issues with the way uh, sexual assault survivors in New Jersey are treated. In fact, just last night, we did the latest installment on this investigation, a half hour documentary, and, and I don't know that we're done anytime soon. But more than anything, I want to thank the people who came forward, the survivors who are willing to trust us with their stories, because without them, we couldn't do anything. So I'm Eileen Jacobson, uh, the vice president, and um, I'm honored to uh, uh, award, give two of these awards. Uh, the first one is for sports photography, and the award goes to Newsday photojournalist Thomas A. Ferrara. Yes. And let me, yeah. And his, let me just say a few words. Um, his fine work has won several Silurian Medallion and Merit Awards in the past. And this medallion is for the Throwbacks Vintage Baseball on Long Island. And um, Tom spent several months documenting the players and the teams who play the game as it was played in the 1800s in fields and pastures wearing heavy wooden cap, woolen caps, not wooden caps, um, and uh, uniforms without gloves or protective equipment. You can see one of his images in the Silurian News showing a barefoot and barehanded pitcher who has just released a ball that is still whizzing through the air um, as he took the photo. Um, in a separate project, he also, he even created physical tintype portraits of the players and an antique four, four, by, five, four by five camera. Yeah. So he went on, hold it up and we'll get you our pictures taken. Thank you. Yeah. And the second award, and then soon you'll be able to eat, um, is the radio audio feature reporting. The medallion for this category goes to veteran radio journalist Ashley Mill Tite. 
Congratulations, and you won for, as you know, when everything goes digital, older adults can be left out, which and was. Three. Yes, absolutely, yeah. Um, and it was uh, presented on Marketplace Tech. Um, in fact, her frustration with the way her own perfectly content, competent <laughs> mother uh, struggled to obtain uh, so-called customer service spurred her to do the story. Uh, and one conclusion, since virtually everything we do, as, do has moved online, many older people, especially poorer ones, are, or wealthier ones, <laughs> in, our, in my case, um, are left out in the non-digital cold. Many of us here, myself included, understand first understand this um, problem firsthand. Okay, so now the marathon begins with a big night for my alma mater, the New York Times. Who else? Seven of them, more than I suspect they've ever won in a year from our competitors, the Pulitzers. <laughs> and kicking it off, the medallion for feature news reporting to John Leland of, where else, the Times, who regales us with tales of a host of a characters amazingly fetching or poignant, take your pick, rendered with tenderness and empathy to move us all. John, come on down. <laughs> Even if I'd written the speech, I don't have my glasses, so I couldn't read it. <laughs> but, but I, so I'll, I'll defer to Bob Hope, who at ceremonies like this, I, every year I will say, uh, I will, anytime there's an award ceremony, I'll paraphrase Bob Hope, who says, at the Oscars, who said, welcome to the Academy Awards, or as we call it in my house, Passover. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is a little bittersweet. I, I gained the award, but lose the joke. Thank you. And the merit in this category was won by Bloomberg News journalists for their three stories about New York City's mishandling of the migrant crisis. Anybody here from Bloomberg can stand up. Yes. Bravo. Four of them. An another of my alma maters, by the way. <laughs> we even have... Our, no, we have another, a, num a number of smaller outlets have also excelled, producing journalism of the very highest order that have captured the next three medallions I'm going to give out. We even have our first Substack winner. Joe already referred to them, but no, no idea what Substack is? Well, let me tell you. It's where a whole lot of talents come to show off their ideas. Now, I personally have had a Substack page for two years, Andelman Unleashed. Of course, everybody who knows me knows that that's an accurate rephrase, phrase. Uh, a lot of Substack is free like mine or cheaper than a latte at Starbucks. And with, the and with the miracle of the internet, you can have readers on five continents. And so we have Joyce Wadler. And yes, I am a loyal subscriber to her. Hold up the applause, I'm gonna talk to you about her. Now, her Substack stories have won the medallion for commentary. Now Joyce is a longtime Silurian as well, a longtime award-winning journalist and one of the truly funniest New York women I know. And, and that's saying a lot, because I've been in this town for a long time. <laughs> Joyce Wadler, come on down. <laughs> and now we've got to have something from Joyce. Yeah. Come on, Joyce. Let's give it uh, uh, well, something like um, 10 years ago, I got the, the boot from my, my last... <laughs> my last job, no hard feelings. And I found myself to be um, a, a columnist without a column. So I did what you more or less have to do these days, and I hired myself. I had a, a terrible reputation for, for really being a pain in the ass. Um, there are people here who can... <laughs> but but I, felt, I felt it was worth it. So I hired me. Um, I'm not making a lot of money. There are no benefits. There's no pension. But the freedom is fantastic. So if any of you are feeling lost and floundering and that you can't be yourself because you're not writing, come on over to Substack. 
It takes no money. You'll make no money. <laughs> but you will have so much fun. So, well, uh, thank you. And you can win an award now. Now, there is a merit winner for commentary, and that goes to Alex Faducal of the New York Times, yet again, for his New York story. And not the last time, not the last time I'll be trying to pronounce his remarkable name this tonight. So, um, and he has been a perennial award winner here, by the way, I would note, um, and we're happy to have him. Now, the investigative work by journalists at The City, an online news service dedicated to coverage of New York City, was so impressive that several of our investigations, of their investigations, earned them the medallion for investigative reporting. In fact, I was on the judging panel for this award as it happened, and quite frankly, I simply couldn't make up my mind, and neither could my co-judge, um, uh, Alan Dodds Frank. There were just so many, there were so many of them. Well, three of them, separate investigative stories that I said, oh hell, let's give them all an award. So, to Bianca Pallaro and Reuven Blau, exposing a horrific commissary scam on Rikers, a big team probing Mayor Adams and his very special fundraising infusions from straw donors, and in partnership with Type Investigations and Columbia J School, how the city schools were depriving 8,600 children of services at the height of COVID. So, everyone, come on down. Okay. Hi, okay, um, now, now Marty Gottlieb and um, myself, Alyssa Katz, as editors working with this fantastic team of investigative reporters. Just really want to thank the Solarians for honoring a startup, nonprofit newsroom devoted to New York City, devoted to holding our government officials accountable. Um, I think we're doing a great job at it and uh, really thrilled to be recognized for it. So thank you. Okay, so the CUNY Graduate School of Journalism students who make up the New York City News Service take home the medallion for minority affairs reporting for their migrant reports on the newest New Yorkers. Now, if Craig Newmark ever had any doubts about all that dough he spent underwriting CUNY journalism, all he has to do is read this amazing project. Under their inimitable professor, Jerry Hester, who I have the privilege of having worked alongside at the New York Daily News for more years than I'd care to remember, a star then, certainly a star now, and an amazing curator of talent. So, CUNY Student Award winners, come on down. Okay. Thank you so much for the award. Um, and we obviously owe a lot of gratitude to the people who shared their stories with us. Um, I just wanna uh, include, um, add to that. So this was a special report it was a group effort with 20 uh, colleagues at the J School, from reporters to photographers to edit editors to our advisors. We're so honored for this award. Thank you guys so much. Now, there are two merit winners in the Minority Affairs category, one for the Deed Finders by George Joseph and Sarah Maldonado of the city, and the other for Alex Traub of the New York Times for his obituary of disabled Boy Scout Greg Whitney. Please take a well-deserved bow. Stand up, stand up, so we can see you. There you go. Now, the next four medallions, as I promised, have all been won by the New York Times. <laughs> Just, what, whoa. Do I hear, do I hear commentary from this audience? Um, anyway. It's just a fragment of their big night, I'm afraid, sorry. For public service reporting, the medallion goes to Amy Julia Harris and Jill Ransom of the time for their mentally ill, homeless, and mishandled by New York. Now, these are two amazingly courageous investigative reporters spent untold hours over a year, and then some, interviewing the homeless, often mentally ill men and women classified inhumanely as criminals by the real criminals, city officials, politicians, healthcare administrators who repeatedly, often toxically, failed them. It's the epitome of public service reporting. Amy, Julia, and Jill, come on down. Uh, thank you so much for this award on behalf of uh, myself and my reporting partner, Jan Ransom. 
um, and for the New York Times for uh, giving us the time and space to uh, report on an issue, homelessness and mental illness, that a lot of people would rather forget and not think about. So thanks for giving us the opportunity to shine a light. Thank you. The Merit Award for Public Service Reporting goes to Fola Akinibi of Bloomberg News for her critique of Mayor Adams' lack of support for the city's pre-K program. Stand up. Let's pay tribute to him. Fola, thank you. We're back to Alex Fadukal. Yes, that's right, back again. Alex Fadukal of the Times, and this time, a medallion for arts and culture reporting for his Inside the Hogwarts of Fashion, a look inside New York's a unique high school of fashion industries, as unique as the reporter who wrote about them. Really, we're going to have to name this award for him. How many times have you won? <laughs> Alex, come on down. Thanks, David. Um, I didn't think too much about what to say, but uh, so I'll keep it short and sweet. Um, you know, awards, uh, winning awards is great, of course. The work is, is what matters, as we all know. But journalism is hard, very hard. Um, probably, uh, you know, we, we get used to... Uh, so I didn't think this through. Journalism is tough. Um, if anyone has any advice on uh, it not being tough, I'm happy to hear it. But um, so, you know, it's nice to get recognition. And I just, uh, on a personal note, Jim Windolph, my editor, is here. Thankful to him. Um, but I also have the great luck of two of my other editors in the room, Bill Ferguson, who taught me, that guy taught me everything I know, and I owe him a lot, and Peter Keepnews, uh, one of the secret weapons of the New York Times, one of the best line editors in the business. Anyways, thank you so much. Oh, Joyce Wadler. I was misinformed. Forever fan, you know? <laughs> there are two merit awards in this category, both won by Newsday. Yes. One to Vern Gay for Will AM Radio Survive? and the other to Rafer Guzman for Strong Islands in the House when hip hop ruled Long Island. Woo. Now, this next award is very personally important to me. Our next medal winner is someone I have known and admired for years, especially for her origins in Bucharest, Romania, where I spent any amount of time for the New York Times at the height of the Ceausescu regime. When Rukmini Karamaki probably does not know is that we were blocks from each other. The problem is I was 35 years old then and she was five, a descendant of an ancient and patrician family of the Eastern Balkans. And now she takes home the medallion for people profiles for her piece on another princely descendant, Anderson Cooper's newest assignment, Grief, his own. Rukmini, come on down. Um, this is an award that is a little bit strange in the sense that it's an award for a profile of another journalist. It's an award for uh, a profile of Anderson Cooper's grief. Um, I'm so thankful to Anderson for opening up to me and being as vulnerable as he was. I'm also thankful to Nikita Stewart, uh, to Matoshinsky, my editor, who's here. Um, and to well, Noel Milia, who edited the piece. Thank you. The sister of one of Anderson's producers is sitting right over there, the daughter of the great Herb Haddad of our uh, of Silurians. So um, you should know that, Rukmini. There are two merit awards in this category, one to Emma Hinchcliffe of For Fortune for her Meta's True Believer, the other to Silurian Arlene Schulman for the parable of a book collector for Next Avenue. Stand up. <laughs> On the both sides of our room. Now, for my swan song, 
we wind up with the single most amazing photo I've seen in a very long time. And as it happens, right near where my wife's best friend, a Brooklyn Jew, just rented an apartment. Jonah Markowitz of the New York Times wins the medallion for feature news photography for his two-year project and photo essay, Dawn to Dusk on the Corner Where Bangladeshi Brooklyn Gathers. The photo tells it all. More Bangladeshis in one spot than I've ever seen anywhere outside of, well, Dhaka. So I'm the guy that brought all the Bangladeshis together. Um, thank you, everybody. Quick notes. One, the story is there's no shock value. It's just about a community in Brooklyn that deserved the attention, that deserved the reporting time, and that deserved uh, the Metro cover. And thankfully, because of the New York Times, we got it. Uh, and that's not something I take lightly. So thank you to the New York Times for believing in me and believing in this story. And uh, the only other thing I'll say is that I know we talked a little bit about uh, the, the movement of journalism online. And photography matters more to journalism now than I believe it ever has. Photography drives clicks. Photography drives engagement. And thank you to the Metro and Desk for the New York Times for recognizing that. Thank you very much. And congratulations to the Merit Award winners in this category, Adi Talwar of City Limits and Steve Faust of Newsday. <laughs> Stand up. Where are you? Where are you at? Show yourselves. Okay. And now, the real entertainment portion of the evening begins with the chap who I always seem to follow. First as president of the Overseas Press Club, the OPC, then as president of the Silurians, the incomparable Alan Dodds Frank, or ADF as his friends know him. Come on down. Merci beaucoup, David. For those of you who have not uh, noticed that little red thing in his left lapel, since December 2021, David has been a chevalier, I'm pronouncing it wrong, I'm sure, a knight of the French Legion d'honneur for his coverage over the decades of French culture. Most of his friends think it was for restaurant recommendations, but that's not really true. Anyway, uh, he never rests on his laurels. You should know that he is writing an amazing cycle covering every election in the world this year. Talk about a headache. <laughs> anyway, we're going to move on to broadcast television and beyond. While the Silurians Press Club is celebrating its 100th anniversary, we are entering the next century, acknowledging the vast changes in the media that have been revolutionizing the way we all receive our news. Our first broadcast award, the Medallion for Best Breaking News Coverage, will henceforth be known as the best television reporting for broadcast or cable. This year, the medallion goes to the 11 p.m. news team at WABC News Channel 7 for their thoughtful, well-planned, and well-executed coverage of the case presented by New York District Attorney Alvin Bragg about the indictment of Donald Trump and the way the grand jury handled it. This series of reports covering half their newscast, clearly presented the facts of the case and what laid ahead as the former president faced the slow, grinding wheels of justice. Excepting for ABC, is Marina Vaz Tero and Sarah Kim. Uh, my name is Marina. I'm the Nightside Assignment Editor at Channel 7, so probably not who you were expecting, but I'm subbing in tonight. Um, I obviously want to say thank you for this incredible honor on behalf of everyone at WABC. Uh, local, local news is essential. We're so lucky to be able to tell stories night after night, um, and we're so lucky that New Yorkers trust us with their stories. So thank you so much for this. I'd like to thank our OTV president, Chad Matthews, our news director, Scott Matthews, our general manager, Mayor Lumar Galvez, Peter Coons and Kim Dillon, um, and then our 11 o'clock team. It's small, but it's mighty, and every single night we manage to pull something together and get it on the air. So I can't thank them enough. Our executive producer, Brian Lenniker, 11 o'clock producer, Carl Schweitzer, Bill Ritter, who, uh, you know, I think we all know. So thank you, Bill. Love you always. Sade 
better in Wah. Uh, she is also at 11 o'clock anchor. Um, so thank you. <laughs> it's real metal. I'll take it back to the station. We really, really appreciate it. Um, we're so honored. And again, thank you. And please consume your local news. So thank you. <laughs> That's all. Uh, our judges realize that many entries across the spectrum now combine print and video coverage online. So we combed through the categories and decided to create a new award for the best digital video reporting. We discovered so much superb work that we decided we would inaugurate this award twice with two outstanding long form reports winning this year. The first medallion for digital video reporting goes to Michael Kara of The Record. And I could say for the first time and the only time I will say, and NorthJersey.com and USA Today, the New Jersey Network. We're just going to call it the record after this. But anyway, Michael Kara, for his report when Neji Seabrooks called for help. When Michael Kara did an on-camera interview with Neji Seabrooks for a feature story about Seabrooks' community work with mental health, he had no idea it would later become the foundation for a 19-minute documentary about a tragedy. Kara traced Seabrook's tragic death at the hands of Patterson, New Jersey cops, the very same police department Seabrooks had called for help while suffering his own mental health breakdown. Accepting is Michael Kara and the video editor on this. Mike. Very appreciative to all the people who spoke to me for this story, and I hope I did him justice. So thank you for seeing me. In this new category, a second medallion goes to Yoav Gonin of the city for his report, NYPD's abuse of authority unearthed in a Brooklyn gun incident. The award also goes, I might add, to his videographer, Jeff Bassinger, uh, to, to whom we owe an apology because I think we omitted his name from the Silurian News. And uh, tell your mother we are sorry. <laughs> Come on up, but let me tell everybody a little bit about your story. This dramatic report captured two high-ranking police chiefs intervening to help a retired police officer accused of threatening two juveniles with his registered gun. Persisting with Freedom of Information Act requests, Gonan obtained video from 36 cameras, including many in and around a Brooklyn police station, to document this abuse of authority and to show the act of vandalism by the juveniles that had spurred the initial confrontation at a neighborhood store. Here's our man. Still as a rapper, look at that. Hot off the press. Uh, I don't know what you all are talking about. This job is super easy. I. I, they literally just give me content that's incredibly reported, and I just try to make it look decent and make sense. And uh, thank you, Marty Gottlieb, who, if you, if if you don't know him, he, if you ever ask me to do an assignment, I, I'm there. Just that's it. Thank you. By the way. Um, we only give one medallion per category, but for another 100 bucks, you can get one for yourself. <laughs> We're happy to have them circulate. It just costs a lot to print them. <laughs> anyway, the medallion for sports reporting goes to Kevin Armstrong of the Newark Star-Ledger for Ghanaian Grace. <laughs> this was a terrific profile of an extraordinary 17-year-old high school soccer player in New Jersey. The story, executed expertly in both print and video, traced the incredible journey of Ransford Guyon from his barefoot start in a Ghanaian village to stardom at St. Benedict's Prep in Newark, where he led the team to a 101-game winning streak. Kevin Armstrong is here to accept. Ransford uh, just graduated uh, St. Benedict's Prep in Newark uh, last week, and he's heading to Clemson University, uh, the defending national champion. So uh, he's got a bright future. You might see him in the uh, World Cup in New Jersey in uh, 
Well, at least in the World Cup, we'll see if he makes it to the final in uh, MetLife Stadium and whatnot. But um, he has a bright future. And uh, thank you to my editors, uh, Kevin Manahan and Chris Kelly and Susan Pavkovich. Uh, always appreciate the time and the space. Strong reporting, deep research, and fine writing enabled the staff of The Record, and we'll skip all the rest, to win medallions for environmental reporting and for health and science reporting. The health and science medallion goes to Scott Fallon and Lindy Washburn of The Record for their exhaustive, in-depth look at aging in New Jersey. Never a picnic. Ask Robert Menendez. No, they, he's not part of their series. Um, this series not only elaborated the problems in the labyrinths of elder care, it also concisely provided an important public service. These reporters produced a guide for readers to navigate the patchwork system of health care and how to plan for it financially. Happily, Scott Fallon and Lindy Washburn are here. And while they accept this award, I want to mention that they're also part of the second winning team, the one for environmental reporting. Lindy and Scott, come on up. Uh, first off, thank you for allowing the New Jersey Press Corps to crash your party. Um, we are on the west side of the uh, room, we can tell. Uh, feels like we're closer to Bayonne than Midtown, but whatever. Um, I want to thank the uh, Silurians. You know, this generation, um, they really forged the journalistic standards that we all grew up with. And uh, a lot of those standards aren't really followed by the big tent media these days. Uh, so it's always special to be recognized by the Silurians. I also want to uh, recognize three people here. Dan Sforza, the editor of the record. Jim O'Neill, our investigative editor. And Ashley Balchersack, a reporter who contributed a key piece on uh, homeless, the elderly homeless. Uh, it's not as rare as you think. Um, but those people were, were uh, instrumental to our series. So thank you, guys. Uh, the judges also have awarded two merit awards for health and science reporting. First goes to Sharon Otterman of the New York Times. For her, her, her report was titled, Inside the ME, we meaning medical examiner's office, where opioids fuel surge in deaths. Adam Stone, the examiner, also wins. Adam? For, for your care has been outsourced. Now to the record part two. The medallion for environmental reporting goes to the staff of the record for their powerful seven-part report called Hazards Next Door. In addition to Fallon and Washburn, the winning reporters are James M. O'Neill, Steve Janowski, Christy Katafi, I hope I got that right, Ashley Balserak, and David Zimmer. Now, an 11 alarm fire in Passaic at a hazardous chemical warehouse was the starting point for this year long investigation that ended up mapping 156 hazmat storage sites across the state. This series documented the dangers associated with chemical storage and covered what government agencies are doing about it. But as with the other winning entry from the record, this series also provided a lot of practical advice to readers to help citizens be prepared in the case of a chemical emergency, in case the warehouse you didn't know existed until you read the record blows up next door. Here from the record to accept the award, I think, is James O'Neill. Kind of the ironic thing about this um, story or project was that initially when we sought information through the state version of FOIA in New Jersey, OPRA, um, the state denied us all this information. Even though it was supposed to be submitted by these companies through the Community Right to Know Act. Very ironic, right? And this is the same state now that uh, has uh, eviscerated the OPRA law uh, with legislation just passed in the, this month. So um, that's a very important law, just like FOIA, and we have to keep fighting for the right to have access to public documents and keep the public knowledgeable about what's around them and what the government's doing. But thank you very much. I think it's important to recognize that the, 
news organizations that are represented in this room are among the few that actually have serious commitments to informing the citizenry and reporting news, not made up news, not alternate sets of facts. That's just my own ad lib, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> anyway, Marietta Samoz of City Limits wins the Merit Award for Environmental Reporting for her efforts to block gas bans are growing. Will it work in New York? She here, please stand up if you're anyway. Susan Antilla, Business Insider, wins the medallion for business and financial reporting for her hard-hitting work on the ugly business of a toxic workplace. This investigation is a master class in reporting. I urge everyone to go back and read how Susan Antilla turns over the rocks. Sensing that a story might surface as federal court cases were filed, once a new law banning the use of mandatory arbitration in sexual harassment cases went into effect, Antilla began checking federal court dockets every day. She soon discovered a complaint from a female employee of an insurance agency in western Pennsylvania, the Arias Organization, obtaining a vast array of documentation, including videos and emails, Antilla uncovered a cesspool of misbehavior by top officials at Arias, an affiliate of Globe Life, a New York stock exchange listed company. How do you measure Antilla's impact? After the stories began appearing, Warren Berkshire's Berkshire Hathaway sold all 6.35 million shares it owned in Globe Life. Susan Antilla. <laughs> Thank you to the Slorains for this honor. Um, this all started because a 26-year-old young woman, an insurance agent in Pittsburgh, decided to trust me and tell me about the multiple times that her boss sexually assaulted her at the office. Um, it grew into her helping me find information about that same company, Globe Life, um, defrauding customers all over the United States and Canada. Um, she was so courageous, and we all know how we benefit from people who take those risks, and I'm so grateful to her. Um, it ends up now that the DOJ and the SEC and all of those alphabet suit, soup um, agencies are looking at the company. And um, I also want to tell you that I'm really grateful for Business Insider. I'm a freelance writer, and those of you who are freelancers know how very difficult it is for us to take on projects like this. I've been working on this for a year and a half. I've written nine stories about the company. And Business Insider has stuck with me, publishing these stories. And with a deep, deep bench of really good fact checkers and lawyers and um, really sort of astounding um, support for reporters. So I want to make sure I brag on them, too. Thank you. The Merit Award in this category goes to Rosalind Adams of the city for Big Cannabis Comes to New York. We had two extraordinary photographs, each of which is winning a medallion for breaking news photography. One of these photographers, I mean photos, you can see on the front page of the Silurian News, which you have. And I might add that this is a superbly done issue by Eileen Jacobson, who you will soon hear from, our first vice president. But anyway, um, this is uh, by Stephanie Keith of Bloomberg News, and it's, it, it, it's uh, Bitcoin executive Samuel uh, Bankman Freed. I would call it an arresting image, but uh, that's... Anyway, Stephanie, come on. I want to thank uh, Marie Monteleone, who was my editor at the time. Uh, she was at Bloomberg, and she's no longer in the news division, sadly. Um, <clears throat> I really loved working with her. We had a great relationship, and I feel like this photo is really about um, having a great relationship with your editor, because Marie called me the moment she heard he got arrested, and then uh, she got me completely obsessed over Sam Bankman-Fried. Um, is he in the Bahamas? Is he coming back? Oh my God, it is plain land in white plains. Uh, where is he now? Uh, you know, to the point where I'm just like, ah! And uh, she... <laughs> 
<laughs> she had me, um, and she booked me through all that, you know, uh, angsting. So I, I wasn't taking any photos, but I was being paid to angst <laughs> over Sam Bankman Freed for weeks. And uh, so by the time Sam Bagman Freed got out of the car on that corner, you can bet your ass, I was right there in front of him <laughs> and taking his photo. <laughs> so that's how I got that photo. And thank you so much for the Silurians. You gotta love an editor who promises never to bother you more than once an hour. The other medal goes to Ben Frackenberg of the city for his striking image of a man bloodied during a run-in with the New York Police Department. Ben Frackenberg. Thank you, and I just want to say that um, I'm very lucky to work for a news site that supports photojournalism. I work for a local news site, and it's a very rare thing right now to have a news site that supports photography. And it's something very important that we all need to do. And I was working for the city covering the protests around Jordan Neely when he was killed on a subway. And um, I went to a protest um, that was happening on the uh, F train platform at the Broadway Lafayette station. And I was downstairs when our reporter, Gwen Hogan, called me and said, you have to get up. People are being arrested upstairs. And I ran up and saw a man who was thrown to the ground by police and bloodied, being dragged away. And I ran to the street knowing they could arrest me. Um, I could be thrown to the ground. And I knew it had to do it. It's my responsibility to do that. And I took the photo. And that's why I'm here. And that's why local news is so important. And I just want to say, too, very quickly, that Stephanie Keith is one of my mentors. And she took her time. Um, when I was a reporter making the transition to being a photographer, I had been laid off from Dean Info and we formed a union. And a billionaire owner fired us all because he didn't want to have to deal with that. And I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. And Steph took her time to help to train me as a photojournalist. And it's an honor of mine to be here and to win an award with her. And I should also mention that Stephanie was arrested at that same event, wearing her press pass within 10 feet of a member of DCPI, the police PR, we have the photograph that we published in the city. And that is why we need to support photojournalism and photojournalists, because we need that kind of support. We need to have staff photographers working for newsrooms, because we, photographers are putting their lives on the line in Gaza, are being arrested in the United States of America, recovering the police, and we need that support. Thank you. Well, I think the editors ought to note that if you ever wonder whether re photographers could report, you just heard two of them who really would be good at it. Um, before I turn the podium back over to our current president, Joe Berger, and our first vice president and Silurian news editor, Eileen Jacobson, I would be remiss if I didn't salute uh, Fran Carpenier, our dinner chair, and, uh, yeah. and the 100-year-old cake that she cooked. <laughs> it looks like a fabulous cake. I'm, I'm going to eat mine when I sit down. Anyway, um, Eileen, it's up to you now. I'm going to move this little thing here, and then you can move it away when Joe comes up. Oh, yeah, and Jack DC. We need a hand for the oars chairman. I just want to say, I'm, before we proceed with our awards, um, we Silurians need to thank Joe Berger, right. uh, a reporter and editor for the New York Times for 30 years, a distinguished author, most recently of the bi a biography of Elie Wiesel, and our president for the past two years. We are grateful for his outstanding leadership. Um, so raise a glass of water or wine or imaginary, in my case, um, and uh, as we praise him, he has attracted interesting and prestigious speakers for our luncheons and uh, 
also a wide range of other uh, journalists. And um, he has also uh, composed compelling and literate emails that attracted audiences to attend our meetings. Um, he also delivered a graceful and, and has graceful and witty introductions before our speakers started their presentation. Uh, notably, he called Maggie Haberman, who will be back this fall to s speak here. Um, for this crowd, crowd, you are our Taylor Swift, our number one <laughs> rock star. Um, and he responded, he has responded with generous and level-headed decisions in sometimes difficult circumstances. Um, I hope I can do half as well. So thank you, Joe. <laughs> thank you very much for that, Eileen. I, I appreciate it. Um, you know, the, the, uh, the people who, were, who uh, are on the governing board of the Silurians work so hard for, uh, in totally in, in volunteer fashion. And it's been, um, you know, inspiring to to have spent two years watching all the wheels turn and all the personalities uh, uh, work together to uh, produce an event like this, for example. So uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And, and, and All right, so now I believe it's time for the President's Choice Award. Am I wrong? Jack? You're right. Okay. <laughs> Who would it be? The, the medallion, one of the two medallions for the President's Choice Award, which is our highest award, is given to reporters Andy Newman, Dana, Rub Dana Rubenstein, Julie Turkowitz, and photographers Todd Heisler and Juan Arredondo. For a vivid and at times haunting series on the crisis created by the influx of thousands of migrants seeking asylum in New York City. If you haven't seen the package, you must. It's, 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 um, it is a, a, a dramatic example of um, the, the, um, the benefits of the internet and uh, the benefits of all the technology that we have and, and, and how it can really shape and tell us uh, uh, an important story. Um, the, the photographs were wonderful. The writing was was uh, polished and, and lyrical in, in many in many cases. Um, it was wonderful. Uh, they reported compassionately and with nuance on the burden the surges created in terms of homelessness and and the budget costs, but also the opportunities it has opened for both the migrants in the city in the ways immigrants always have. Their series, and, and I say this as an immigrant myself, so their series des described in dismaying detail how Mayor Eric Adams and municipal officials fumbled their response to a surge created by the global and political forces and how they fueled the backlash. Hitching a ride with Mayor Adams on a four-day trip through South America, they humanized the crisis by explaining who the migrants are and why they come. Please come up. This, is, uh, this has been just about the most fully collaborative project I've ever been involved in in my 30 years on the Metro Desk. It's just been a phenomenal uh, experience. And I'm just going to very briefly introduce the rest of the band um, and thank them all. Todd, on cameras. Um, your amazing photo essay about the new m migrant communities forming around shelters uh, that I got to write the words for um, and who took 
more beautiful photos for the chronology of the crisis that I did with my colleague Dana Rubenstein, whose sourcing inside government <clears throat> provided most of the piece's investigative heft, which some papers are still catching up with six months later. Our tireless and fantastic editors, Sarah Garland on words, and Eve Edelheit on photos. Uh, the ever-hustling Spanish and French-speaking freelancers, Olivia Ben Simon and Raul Vilches, who are not here, but who actually did most of the field reporting for Todd's photo essay, and also our colleagues Joe Goldstein and Jay Root and Nick Fandos, whose work we rated for our chronology piece. And finally, Juan Arredondo, a brilliant photographer and a wonderful travel partner who doubled as my translator and bodyguard yep. on that crazy trip through South America with the mayor and his bad will mission. Uh, as they say, there, there was this thing in Puebla where uh, this, it was just this total photo op thing with like the Pueblan Congress. And there was this thing where Adams and the whatever, mayor. governor of Puebla were doing this thing and they got the entire room to make this heart thing. So that, thank you, Solarians, very much. Oh, and also, thank you to all the, all the people who traveled to this country enduring unbelievably difficult and dangerous conditions, only to be confronted by slews of annoying reporters asking them really personal questions and without their opening, us, opening up to us for reasons that are unknown to me and did not benefit them in any way. I'm very grateful for that also. Thank you, Solarians. Thank you, Jerry. If, if I may sound like an old fart for a second. Um, I remember when I, uh, there was a period where I was working as an editor in the Metro desk and um, they had this new reporter, Andy Newman. And you could give Andy anything. You know, a lot of times when you're an editor, there's certain reporters who are hard to, to get off, uh, to get them on, on, on the block. Um, Andy was, was willing to do anything. And, I, and besides that, he had enormous talent and showed it right away. Um, and then Todd, uh, these are two people I work with. I didn't work with Dana and I didn't work with uh, Juan, but um, Todd w was a, an incredibly fearless a photographer. He would climb on top of uh, spires to take, uh, am I right about that, Todd? Which building? You know, if, if, you, have, if, you, if you have a, 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 if heights make you uncomfortable as they do me, watching Todd climb, I mean, uh, watching uh, his photographs from the tops of buildings was awe-inspiring. Awe so, um, it was, it was a pleasure to work with you guys at the times, when, uh, and, and thank you. Uh, so now let me bring up, let me introduce Eileen, who's going to be a great president of the Silurians, because she already has done so much for them. So come on up. So the second um, President's Choice winner is Newsday, where I've worked for 30 years. Um, with uh, a heroic 12-part uh, series um, titled Feeling the Squeeze, The High Cost of Living on Long Island. The 12-part series, uh, complete with charts, personal stories, and videos, um, Newsday is really into, um, a, I should say, a pioneer in multimedia. Um, and uh, it, the, all, all these things together have paint, paints a, painted a comprehensive and affecting portrait of how hard it is for many middle class and low income Long Islanders to get by in the time of rising prices for virtually everything. As usual, um, uh, Newsday went all, or, 
all out in its examination of the cost of living on Long Island. Though some people may think of Long Island as a land of Gatsby era, McMansions and glitzy Hamptons estates, um, the stories point out that 19% of residents in Nassau County and 26% in Suffolk don't make enough money to meet their basic needs, and that with rising inflation, particularly in rents and house prices, the situation is worse than it was just four years ago. The project offers compelling voices and data and then goes beyond reporting the facts to offer solutions in the form of links and telephone contacts for agencies and other critical resources. And um, I'm told that Newsday Associate Managing Editor, Bob Shields, uh, will be accepting or speaking, be the speak speaker. Although, you know, we also want to maybe bring up other people too. And uh, some of the leadership of Newsday, um, Pat Dolan, the owner, and uh, Debbie Krennick, the editor, who are both here. Um, so come on up. You know what? It's very nice to see old friends, new friends, Twitter friends. Uh, it's also nice to be here as my first event as a member of the Slorians. So, so on, on behalf of the entire staff at Newsday, I'm honored to accept the award for our Feeling the Squeeze series. The project began with a simple question. How do some Long Islanders of all backgrounds and walks of life, families that in other parts of the country would be considered living below the poverty line, survive in such a costly region? The answer wasn't simple. It wasn't a single story, but a series of stories, videos, data reporting that took several months to create, exploring the lives of everyday people struggling to make ends meet. We met mothers working multiple jobs to keep a roof over their children's heads. We found examples that essentials like food, healthcare, transportation became luxuries for many. The series unveiled the invisible walls that divide Long Island. But Filling the Squeeze wasn't just about documenting hardship. We aimed to help people. The series offered a plethora of resources, as was mentioned earlier, ways to get job training, childcare assistance, financial literacy. And experts offered solutions across the board to long-standing issues of economic struggle on Long Island. Some of the main contributors to the series are here tonight. Beth Whitehouse, who kicked off the reporting of real people's stories, got them to trust them, trust us, go on camera, expose their issue. Rochelle Sleets, managing editor, soon to be editor-in-chief of Newsday, who helped pull together many, many threads, uh, many different pieces to make a cohesive series. And of course, Pat Dolan, who was in a tiny video meeting with me, and I said, hey, news side's doing this story about people who should be under the poverty level, but they aren't on Long Island. We should do more on that. He said, yes. <laughs> so by bringing sharp focus the fa to those faces of Long Islanders one might see every day at the grocery store or at the gas station eking out a living, feeling the squeeze show that they are not others but us. So on behalf of the dozens and dozens of reporters, editors, photographers, videographers, that helped put this series out. Uh, thank you very much for this award. Thank you. Again, let me introduce the new president, Eileen Jacobson, who's gonna take over. And uh, I hope you've had a, uh, a gratifying and entertaining uh, evening. I know I have. So uh, thank you all for coming. Sure. Think, again. Th think about joining the Silurians and have a good safe trip home. Take care. <laughs> <laughs>